Hello and welcome to this episode of the Beyond the Apex podcast. Today we are talking about the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix which has just passed. Um, we actually watched it on the car on the way back from a track day, um, but it was a great race. It was and we got to actually watch all of it because we were yeah. quite lucky. And we actually arrived back as the car was finished, yeah, yeah the went over the checker flag, so great timing. But yeah, I think it was a really good race despite the fact that Red Bull was dominant. Yes, definitely. I mean, there's a lot to talk about, even though mm. Max did win by absolutely a lot. So, yeah. <laughs> but there's still a lot to talk about. So, yeah. Without any further ado, let's get into yeah. it. Yeah. So Max again was a lot further ahead in qualifying than he was in Bahrain. Mm. Um, I, I think it was about three tenths, and he didn't even set his final lap, which yeah. was the most impressive bit. Um, and he actually beat the overall lap record on the track, which to me didn't make sense because obviously it was the 2021 cars which were meant to be a lot quicker yeah. than this new regulation of cars. So mm. I'm excited to see that kind of this regulation of cars is starting to compete with those ones. Yeah. Um, but again, the race was dominant. It was, it was. Mm. I mean, yeah, he just kind of like got in front and then just that's it into the yeah. distance. I mean, that's just normal now, isn't it? Yeah, but obviously again, this was a surprise that Checo again got another one two for the team. Yeah. I mean he is actually performing this year. Literally, Obviously yeah. in qualifying, Leclerc is getting the edge on him, I think hundred percent, but we always Leclerc is one of the best qualifiers on the grid, so yeah. we kind of expect that. Yeah. But in the race, Checo is so strong. I think we're seeing, you know, like you said, Leclerc will maybe qualify in in front and mm. then yeah, um Perez <laughs> will be able to get in front during the race. Which is what we're seeing actually, we've seen it, like not well. I reckon we're going to see it so more well. in the 2024 yeah. season. Absolutely. Um, but like you said, it's just great for Checo because yeah. he's really putting himself in that battle for the seat. He actually. really is. And uh, do you know what? Fair play to him because I think before the season, everyone had already written him off. Yeah, they're like, right, bye Checo. Yeah. Like, no. But he, if he carries on getting these one twos, he is lining himself up. Well, perfectly. I'm saying if he keeps getting these one twos, like there is no reason yeah. to not keep him on. Like, in terms Zero of reason. race pace, there's, yeah. there's nothing, because he's getting as much possible points for the team as possible. Mm. And I think, obviously, look, I, there are, I think there's no denial that they have Checo in there because they just want Max to have an easy championship. They don't want what we saw in 2016 with Merck, where they had the two uh, drivers battling for the championship, very, very, like, kind of tooth and nail, and it led to crashes and this and the other. They don't have that with Max and Checo, and it's yeah. kind of very streamlined with them. Mm. And if he just, as you said, if he just care, carries on getting these second places, there is no reason. Yeah, exactly, there really isn't. No. But do you want to talk oh, about that? So, again, I think this is going to be a recurring theme with Red Bull, that the drama outside of the race weekend is kind of overbearing mm. the actual... <laughs> bearing, let's go on to it, yeah. yeah. Um, but, um, it's, it's kind of overbearing the actual race weekend and the the rumours this weekend um, were that there was a lot of drama around Helmut Marco and the many questions were asked to Max that if Helmut Marco was to be suspended or left the team would he leave and it was pretty conclusive that Max said yes he would leave if Helmut Marco left he has a clause in his contract that allows him to and because of that there were rumours that Red, uh, Mercedes had an agreement with Williams that if they got Max to Mercedes that Kimi Antonelli would then go to Williams and there were rumours left, right and centre, um, but I think they were pretty much shut down by the end of the weekend because they flew in the CEO of Red Bull and kind of had a happy photo with Helmut Marko and said that everything's fine in the team, the Red Bull press uh, PR team working wonders again, yeah. but it, it, yeah, they were shut down. I think the entirety of the F1 fan base was so excited for if yeah. the case of this, if it did happen, but unfortunately I don't think it is. Yeah, I don't think so, but mm -hmm. yeah, like you said, like, into kind of team like um, not contracts but like you know like you said Kimi Antonelli mm. to Williams if, if Max goes to Mercedes I wouldn't be surprised if there's a lot of that going on 100% like, like neither we don't I. know because they don't want to put anything in jeopardy I think yeah. Toto Toto is a very smart businessman he knows yeah. that stuff can go wrong stuff can change yeah. and I think at the moment he is looking at Kimi Antonelli um, who actually had a very good race weekend yeah. um, he got P5 I think after a poor start in the um, race um, and in comparison to Ben, he was only a, a few tenths off on one of the hardest tracks on the grid. So he did do a good job. He set himself up nicely for that Merck seat. Yeah, but again, as you said, I wouldn't be surprised if those contracts are in place. No, absolutely. It's, yeah, it would not surprise me at all. Mm. We'll move on to Mercedes on that note. George, had Nedge on qualifying, uh, Lewis on qualifying again. Yeah. I mean, it, it, the gap was mighty. I think he, oh, let me turn that off. <laughs> um, I think the gap was like, he, George qualified like P5 and then yeah. Lewis was P9. Yeah, it was I mean, a bigger gap than what we've seen. 100%. Previously. And I think that's mainly because of the fact that the grid are closer, so the smallest yeah. margins 
equal kind of massive oh, position 100%. that changes. Like we were seeing like like two like two hundred or yeah, they'll be so close yeah. off, but like. Then like some like I don't know how much will like, end up behind Stroll or something. Yeah, it'll but be like, like it'll be like a tenth off. Literally the tiniest yeah. thing, but yet like you said, they're all so close that it's just mm. it doesn't mean a lot. But I think that is a kind of negative in Lewis's field because he yeah. needs to in, in, improve his qualifying quickly. Otherwise, as the field gets closer, he's just going to start dropping further and further back from and his teammate. That's not what he wants, you know. He is gunning for that eighth championship. Oh my god, know? yeah. And I think especially in the Ferrari. With Leclerc, I mean, yeah. Leclerc is a mighty qualifier, and I don't think anyone would be surprised if Leclerc qualified in yeah. majority of next season. But if he's this far off qualifying, he's going to be like five, six positions yeah. down every race. And yes, his race pace is very, very strong, but sometimes race pace can't bring up can't. six places yeah. on equal kind of teams. Yeah. It's kind of really impossible. Yeah. And look, the race pace again wasn't quite there in the race. George yeah. was kind of chasing Alonso by the end, but then it kind of fell back. So it was interesting to see kind of Aston Martin doing well. It was, it was, and we'll go on to that. Mm. But we'll talk about Ferrari now. The headlines um, of the weekend. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot to talk about in this little section. Yeah, so um, I think firstly, Leclerc, yeah, Leclerc, podium, great drive. Yeah. Um, he was, I think, miles at, yeah, he was uh, six, yeah. 14 seconds in front of Piastri in fourth. Great drive, car was fine, so he had no problems. Yep. So, right, headlines. Oli Behrman will replace Carlos Sainz due to appendicitis. Yes, I mean, wow. It was, I think everyone was like, you know, gunning for him. Oh, like, absolutely. A little English man in a yeah. Ferrari, like, it, yes. And I think, obviously, the youngest ever Ferrari driver now. Yes. Uh, 18 years and like a few hundred days, a couple hundred days old. Yeah. And it, it, he, the pressure on that man's shoulders, well, boy's shoulders, let's not call him a man, he was yeah. a boy. Yeah. The pressure on that boy's shoulders must have been unbelievable. Absolutely, and I, I really think he just, he just smashed it out. He back. absolutely smashed it. I mean, P7, obviously, he was three hundredths off of um, Hamilton in qualifying, which meant he was knocked out in Q2. Yeah. If he had out-qualified Lewis Hamilton, Sir Lewis Hamilton on his debut, he would have told his grandkids about yeah, that. It's, um, yeah. But in the race, he obviously was P11, made his way up to P7, and just, what a drive. He, he had, was under the most pressure, and just lapped it up. Yeah, and he still got in the points, like, and he was doing some great battles. Oh my god, the overtakes he was making, he was sending it down the inside of people like Hulkenberg. Yeah. It was just, it was great to see. It was great. And obviously we both think that, uh, we both hope that Carlos recovers well. Yes. Um, there are kind of rumours that he is going to recover by Australia, so he's going to be in the car. Yeah. But, God, imagine if Behrman actually gets two races in that Ferrari. I mean, he can now officially say that he's a Ferrari driver. Yeah. And it's just, he must, his smile this morning must have been ear to ear. He must have woken up and think, was that a dream? Yeah, fully. Like, literally pinch me. Because, yes. Yeah. Uh, wow. But yeah, literally, take a bow, take a bow, Oli Behrman. Absolutely. But um, moving on to McLaren, um, it was again, we, I think we mentioned it earlier, but it was so close between the teammates yes. in qualifying. I think it was three hundredths in the end splitting them, mm -hmm. and Piastri actually had the edge on Lando, mm -hmm. um, which I think we're going to see throughout the season. It's going to be I very, so. very equal between the teammates. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, the alternate, there was an alternate strategy because of an early safety car. Lando took the alternate strategy and it didn't work out. He finished below Behrman, but an incredible drive from Piastri to get yeah, P4. Yeah. But I think the main headlines again, I think you're going to kind of take us on the regulation side, was the Lando jump start. Yes, so obviously he did like at the beginning like jump start and George Russell kind of <laughs> yeah. like who was on the radio straight away going Lando jump start. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they uh, the stewards decided no further action, didn't they? Which is a bit controversial, but like Sam told me just as we mm. did, well, just as we were supposed to do the podcast, um, the reason they did that was because of the transponder not working. Yeah, so basically with a jump start, they have a transponder at the start of every grid line, mm -hmm. and if the car goes over that transponder, it's an immediate jump start. It's automatic, it's a penalty. Yes. The transponder wasn't working on Lando's grid place. It mm -hmm. malfunctioned, it didn't work, which meant that even if they did give him a penalty, because it was clear to see from everyone that Lando did jump start, McLaren could have appealed and would have won well, yeah. because it, the regulations say that it is an automatic process with the transponder and oh, it's controversial to say the least. It is, it is controversial because like, you know, the fact that he did do it but then you can't ca like catch him out on it yeah. is really like, mm, 
And that shouldn't be the case. It really it? shouldn't be. Yeah. I don't know, like in, in, in the smaller club meetings, you've got judges of fact, so they stand mm. on the pit lane and you'll be able, they'll be able to tell you that person jump started and then that's it, that's, that's a fact, they mm. jump started and that's a penalty. Whereas like just relying on a transponder, I don't know if that's... It is, it's very controversial. Yeah. And look, I was, as I was writing this up this morning, I was kind of thinking of kind of analogies. And it's kind of like, if you get caught for speeding by an officer doing it by eye, and it's just over the limit, in court you will most likely win because there is no factual evidence that proved you did. Even if you did break the speed limit, there is no proof. Mm. And even though there is proof of the cameras and stuff, the proof that they needed wasn't there. Well, and that's, therefore, yeah, that's it, odd. it's very odd. And I think they will look into this because, I mean, if the transponders were working, Lando could have like, jump started by five seconds yeah. and they would have won, well, the, exactly won the thing. Well, that's exactly it. He could have literally gone like 20 seconds at one yeah. seconds, but like he could so much mm. earlier and then literally got into the lead of the race. And then what? Then he wouldn't have got a penalty. Well, he would have got a penalty, but they would have appealed it and, and then he still would have won. So it does yeah. make it makes no sense. It makes no sense, and it's yeah. I think it's definitely going to be looked at because that is a clear fault in the um, shooting system. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I think a lot of people were expecting a penalty there, including myself. Yes. And I mean, we all said it straight away. Yeah. He did it with like boom penalty. Okay, cool. On with the rest of it. And then I think we were all shocked when like, they didn't give one. Hello, we were like there. Eh? Like yeah, like what is going on? But um, yeah, I mean yeah, that's the mechanical stuff. If we move on to Aston Martin. Yeah. I mean, Stroll, he had a crash in the race and it yes. was very poor. I mean, he clipped the inside, he shouldn't be pushing that hard in the first opening laps yep. and then just went and into, just went into it, the yeah. wall and it was a big impact um, Very, crash. yeah. And uh, yeah, like, you put the funny radio. <laughs> oh my God, yeah, when, when his team, his, when his radio engineer came over the radio and kind of said, can you bring it back to the pits while he was like halfway in the wall? And it was like, yeah, no mate, I really can't. Yeah, like, <laughs> there's no way. I'm literally halfway into the tech program. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, I mean, their race pace was very strong. I mean, Alonso with P5, um, he was able to fend off Russell, which proves kind of the race pace of the Aston was ahead of the Mercs, which is very surprising. Yeah. Um, but he clearly does have a massive edge on strong. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's really good to see. We saw from Bahrain, we said that they were like the lower of the midfield. Mm. But now they're actually battling with the midfield. Yeah. Somewhat, Mercedes say, mm. more, more so. Um, because McLaren are just are up there. But yeah. yeah, it's good to see. And I think actually it's a really pos like positive thing. 100%. And I think we're going to see this from race to race that this kind of... As I said last podcast, the kind of block of McLaren, Aston Martin and Mercedes is just going to jumble every single race. Yeah. And I think we, we could see kind of Aston Martin possibly taking podiums, we could see McLaren possibly taking podiums, if the Ferraris obviously have issues, yeah. um, and the Mercs taking podiums. So it's going to be the battle for third this season and possibly second if Checo is a bad race is going to be very exciting. Oh, absolutely, it is. And it's going to be really good to see. I mean, I think mm. we all want to see Alonso on the podium again. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> I'm desperate to see Alonso on the podium again. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Right, we move on to Alpine. Again, such a poor weekend. I mean, Gasly retired off the start, basically. I think yeah. we were halfway through the first lap when yeah. they said they we had to retire the car. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was because of a gearbox problem, which would have been terminal. But, yeah. I mean, their race pace and quality pace was nowhere. Nowhere. Yep. Sl probably the slowest car, like you said. I would say so. Um, and it's just... That team is going to implode. Mm. Um, obviously, if it hasn't already, to if it, I think it honestly has, and I think obviously Bruno Faman has come in as permanency in principle. He's been thrown in the deep end of every deep end there could possibly be, and no, it's not going to be good for the upcoming weekends. No, it's not, and I think we'll definitely see even more of a bad result in Australia. But yeah, same. We'll get back to you on that one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they can't get much worse than Australia when they took each other out and it was double DNF. So if they can do worse than that. Fair play yeah, to them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Right, okay, we'll move on to Williams. Albon's so close to the points. Oh, and yeah. I really do think that if it hadn't been for the Magnuson Masterclass, which we'll talk about later, he would have been in the points. Yeah, definitely. Um, and obviously Sargent was very close to him, behind him, for the majority of the race. Mm -hmm. So, fair play to him. We're seeing Sargent improve, and it's, oh, it's great to see. It's so good to see, and I think yeah. I said it before, and like the, in the last podcast, you know, we've been so critical of Sargent in terms of his pace against Alex, mm. and also the car's pace in general. 100%. But he's really showing kind of, you know, that race raciness if if you like mm. against Albon and then obviously getting that that bit closer to the points. I really do think that we will see Sergeant more more in the points um, this uh, this year. But obviously, I think because of Alpine not being in points. Yes, I do as well. And obviously, I think Sauber as well not yeah. having a race pace. And yeah, I think it, it, it just yeah pushed up. exactly. Um, and 
Yeah, I mean, obviously, he was only in the points one time last season yeah. in Austin, and he wasn't even in the points as he crossed the checker flag. Yeah. It's because of penalties, this, that, and the other. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's, that Williams pairing is getting closer and closer. Albon still has the edge, yes. but it's getting closer. Yeah, definitely. We'll go mm. on to racing balls now. I mean, Sonoda. Oh, he just dominated Ricardo this yes. race. I mean, I think it was four tenths in qualifying and finished ahead of him in the race. Even though the race pace in that racing ball wasn't as strong, mm. Sonoda did very well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he finished ahead in the race. Mm. I mean, I think it's really quite bad for Ricardo in terms of we're so talking about the Red Bull seat. Mm. You know, he needs to dominate. I yeah. mean, if Sonoda's beating him, then Chris, well, Sonoda should be in that Red Bull Absolutely. seat. Absolutely. And I mean, he doesn't. He doesn't look at ease in that car. He had a spin at the end, yeah. and it was I think he was sixteenth in the end. He was nowhere. Yeah, yeah he was sixteenth, and obviously miles behind Sonoda because he spun. Yeah. And I mean, when it, why can't we give equal treatment to as it was to De Vries with Ricardo? Mm. I genuinely think if Ricardo keeps underperforming like he is at the moment, mm. there should be no reason why in the city season in August there shouldn't be rumours that Lawson will replace. I was going to say that I was like, if he performs like this for another two or three races, surely if they're going to operate in the same way they did yeah. with De Vries, he needs to go and Lawson needs to come in because Absolutely. Lawson, what we saw last year, oh. was incredible. Incredible. Unbelievable. I mean, he was obviously that uh, Danny had that kind of highlight in Mexico when he got P4, mm. but Lawson was doing so much better uh, than Ricardo when he was in the seat. Yeah. And it was just, it's, I think they should they should keep pressing the team and be like, look, look at the stats. If Ricardo isn't performing, stick Lawson in the car for the end six, uh, end half of the year. Mm. And then if Lawson does worse, stick Ricardo back in the seat again. I think, I think definitely, I think that's a better way of mm. looking at it. But I do think the issues lie where Ricardo is so tied to Red Bull. Yeah, it's, but, it's yeah. And also, no one wants to see him go. You know, in the media, he's such a big mm. figure. He I makes think, him so much money as well yeah. from PR as well. It's. It it's, is a difficult one. Mm, it really is, and I th genuinely, if it was if it was just a no name driver, and we were looking at the stats, he would get replaced. Yeah. However, as you said, with his close ties to, I think especially Christian. Yes, I was going to say. Yeah, it, it, it's it's unlikely it he's going to be replaced. Yeah, definitely. Right, mm. we'll move on to Salva now. I mean, it's just a poor race weekend. I mean, we we were talk we were kind of highlighting them last podcast about yeah. how they were doing so well, and as you said, it was kind of they had a standout weekend, yes. but they did fall back, and I think they were the boat bottom two. Yeah, yep. they were on track. They were the last two drivers, yes. and yeah, there was no real race pace. Yep. They were kind of running in that gaggle of cars behind Magnussen, mm -hmm. and they were just nowhere. No, no, no footage on TV of them either. So no, the, yeah. You know. yeah, I think we kind of, I kind of looked at Bottas and he was kind of on soft 20 second behind the rest of the pack yeah. at one point. I was like, yeah, 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 really not done well. yeah definitely. Oh. Okay. On that note, we'll go on a bit of a higher note. Oh Haas. my god. Masterclass in strategy from Haas. Whoever their str uh, strat uh, strategists are. Yeah. Take a bow, yeah. because look, Magnussen did not have a great start to the race, I mean I think it was 20 laps in, yeah, 20 seconds worth of penalties, yeah. um, but despite the penalties, they went, right, Magnussen, hold up everyone else, Hulkenberg's on the ultimate strategy, if you can make a pit stop to him, he will be in the points, and he delivered. Yeah, absolutely insane, I mean great teamwork from the whole team in general, mm. the way they did that with the strategy and... You know, yeah, it's just great to see them in the points as it well. It really like, is, I mean it's such a valuable point for Haas, it yeah. shows that Oyo Komatsu is doing well, his technical background is helping them. Yeah. And, I mean, they would have given, as uh, Gunther Steiner would have said, he would have given his right arm for a point at this point. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, uh, it's pr also proved that Tyra has improved. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we said it before and we'll say it again. It's, mm -hmm. it's really improved in the race. Um, you know, the fact that their tyres are not overheating and they're not like. In terms of pit stops, they can actually make strategies where they're similar to other people. Absolutely. And, I mean, Hockenberg run further on the tyres. You wouldn't have seen that no. by any means last no, year. No, you would have been in the wall. Yes, <laughs> yeah, you, after like 10 laps, the tyres yeah. would have been nowhere and you would have been in the wall. But, I mean, it's a <laughs> pass. Yeah. It's just unreal. It's so good to see, and I yeah. think we're definitely going to see the rise of Haas this yeah. season. I think more points finishes are on the horizon as well. I think, I think so. they will be battling with the likes of Aston. Yeah, definitely. Especially if they, I think, it, obviously, Holkenberg, we've seen him in qualifying, he is great. Mm -hmm. And I think if they can out qualify, maybe stroll in the Aston or even Alonso in the Aston if they're not having a good weekend, they will be able to stay in front of them. Yeah, 
Yeah, I agree. And it's going to be so good to see. Oh, right, so right. good, yeah. But yeah, that was it. That was Saudi race two. We're only two races in to the 2024 season, which is not that far when you think about it, because there are a lot of races. Well, it's 24 races this season. <laughs> Honestly. Long, long season. Long season, but we're here for the long one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're excited for next race weekend, which is... Australia. Oh, obviously. Early race, 5 a.m. start. Ooh. Yeah, can't yeah, wait. Can't wait for that. So yeah, we'll get back to you um, after Australia.